Isso foi o que inspirou você a ser um fashion designer? Eu não sei, eu não sei. Eu não sei, eu não sei. Eu sei que eu sou um fashion designer. Ah, you're famous. Uh, tapos yung nakita ko yung art yung tattoo, parang, eh, medyo mga curious. Tapos, kasi yung canvas mo, diba, yung skin, buhay, parang challenge din. Parang, bawat niya ba? Matilig pa tato. Wala lang, kung may, ano, siyempre, artist ako kailangan mo, tato. Tsaka, pagalian, karas na mga problema yan. I have, I have two tattoos. Um, one's on my back. I mean, we can show the one. Yeah, I have another one here around my ankles. It's uh, in Hebrew, and it goes all the way around like that. It's, I mean, it's hard to see, but hmm, why? I've probably always wanted a tattoo since I was like really tiny, because all of my older cousins had them, and I thought they were cool, and I wanted to be a pirate. Don't ask, you know? <laughs> so I had to think of something that was really meaningful, and the opportunity to get my first tattoo, which is the one on my back, came when my entire family started getting tattoos um, in Alipata of our last name, which is Eigenman. And we all got it in different parts of our body, in different styles and different colors, so I basically took the characters and made my own design, which is kind of like a tribalized version of Alibata script, and it's going downwards, and it's black, and then there's a red shadow. So that was my first tattoo, and that I got about two, three years ago. And I got both of my tattoos done in the same place by the same artist, Mike Zumbauer. And um, he actually has been doing my family's tattoos for close to 20 years now. Um, my eldest cousin is doing my titos before that. My mom has a tattoo by my, all my cousins, the girl cousins, the titas. Mike does it all. So it's kind of like a family thing. He gives us discounts. And it's cool. Hi, I'm Morla. I have a tattoo in my right ankle. I got this seven years ago. Got it. Got it when I was 16, illegally, with no blessing from my parents whatsoever. Um, I'm the living testament of why you shouldn't be young, impulsive, and reckless. Because it was a spur of a moment thing. I went to his cousin's store in Alabang Town Center. Like I just had to happen, happened to have a lot of money that with me that day. And I'm like, oh, okay, let's have a tattoo. And the biggest mistake I did was that most people um, put a lot of thought into their tattoos. They have it designed. They draw it themselves. Me, I picked it out of a book. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a scrap for then bam bam hey that looks good so you get that one then if you want, if you're curious about the aftermath um, I was hoping to hide that from my parents for at least two months a year ago so let's see how far I can pull it off the minute I got home I was asleep they were like what the fuck's that yeah. and until now I still don't know what it is <laughs> because it was like when I saw the cat they're like it looks pretty and tough and then over time I just said it's like a gargoyle dragon <laughs> who I went with I went with my then best friend that time my high school best friend she also got a tattoo it was here it was a butterfly <laughs> yeah it was really like it's like okay, come on let's do it and her and mine it's like the minute that she heard the needle get turned on and she like screamed and ran behind the column and I had to put it back already paid for it and it was already like oh <laughs> yeah and trivia I was in my high school uniforms <laughs> yeah actually one of my goals now is to save up and save up enough money to have it retouched and then have a design done over it hopefully turn it into something else I don't mind having it bigger I just want something mine this time I want if I, if I can do it all over again I want it with more meaning I want to think it over and hopefully bring people I actually care about and value, you know, opinions I value. I think another important thing to factor in is um, what artists to go to because like, there's so many tattoo artists but in the Philippines, I mean, 
community. The tattoo community is pretty small. You don't want to go to the really dingy places where I, mean, I don't want to sound racist or like super superior or anything, but where the tight drivers get their tats and stuff. It's, the, the danger of disease and infections and things like that are very important. So um, make sure, you know, before you get your tattoo, ask about sterilization and ask around your friends because the community is small. Like, who are the good artists? Um, it's usually like if you get a, a tattoo done by one artist, you tend to stick with them. That's not always the case, but it seems to be that way. So be careful who you pick. And also, price. Uh, I think it's very important to consider how much the tattoo costs, whether it's colored, how big it is. You might as well scout around and ask you know, how much can you give me. Or like if you have a friend who knows them, oftentimes you can get a discount. So it's a good thing to consider. I'm going to persuade somebody to get a tattoo. I'm not just going to persuade anybody because I believe that people who get tattoos have a deep appreciation for aesthetics. So that's important. You have to check that they're opening a fresh packet of needles. That's one thing that you should do because even though they're clean, they look clean, things that could be secondhand, could be used on another guy. Here's a tip. They don't usually offer this. But at the place where I had my tattoo done, if you're a wimp, um, they offer this cream that they use on dental operations to numb your gums. The thing is, you put that on your skin, the same effect. So it doesn't feel like needles anymore. It's just going to feel like a ball pen tracing your skin. And the thing is, I believe I don't want to persuade. You just ask me, and then I'll tell you what I know about it. Okay, <laughs> 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 <laughs>